The goal of this uh, video is to review over the proper procedures for streaking a bacterial plate. Now the purpose of streaking a plate is to obtain a pure isolated colony and um, this is uh, obtained by spreading a large amount of bacteria over a very large surface area and as we spread the bacteria over the surface area we are diluting the bacteria as we move across the plate. Uh, now each species of bacteria produces very distinct colony appearances and as we look at this particular slide you will notice that we have quite a few different types of bacteria present and when we work with uh, bacteria for identification purposes we want to make sure that we're working with one bacteria at a time and so streaking a plate allows us to ensure that we have only one bacteria that we're working with a pure colony so in order to perform a proper plate streak you will need a, a sterile uh, auger plate a flame loop and some source uh, of flame that will allow you to sterilize your flame loop and that can be a, a Bunsen burner or that can be a specific uh, loop sterilizing uh, apparatus. Now here we have a petri dish that has a mixed culture and we know it has a mixed culture with different species because we can see the difference in the colonial characteristics. So we can see the yellow colonies representing one type of bacteria and we can see the white colonies or the opaque colonies representing another type of bacteria. And so the purpose of streaking a plate would be to take one of these uh, bacteria that we're wanting to work with and to transfer one of these colonies to a sterile auger plate so that we can grow one type of bacteria only. Uh, you'll notice that I keep saying that we need to have a sterile auger plate. Well we want a plate that is free of contamination and you'll notice that this one right here has contamination. It has some uh, mold over here and it's got some they're just airborne contaminants and so to minimize this what we want to do is we want to keep the uh, lid on our uh, petri dish as much as possible and we only want to raise it a small amount when we're working with the dish and then immediately we want to place the lid back on we want to do everything we can to minimize these airborne contaminants Again, here we have one where we can see that we just have a multitude of uh, airborne contaminants and various bacterial species. And so this would not be a quality um, petri dish to work with in identification of a bacteria for a disease. So we would want to take a bacteria from here and we would want to grow a pure colony on an auger plate. In order to get that single uh, bacteria colony cultivated on an auger plate, we need to learn how to properly streak the plate. And uh, there are many ways to streak the plate. We can have one where we streak in four sections and we can have an area where we streak in three. In my labs, I do tend to go with the three streak uh, method and we'll show you how to do that on the next slide. So the first step in um, streaking a plate is to take our flame loop and we want to hold it over a flame until the end of the loop is nice and red. Now what we're doing is sterilizing the uh, loop, making sure that there are no bacteria on the loop. And um, we want to do this with either uh, a Bunsen burner or if your lab has a bacteria incinerator, you can hold this in that bacteria incinerator and you can um, kill off the bacteria. So you want to hold it uh, in the flame until it's nice and red or in the bacteria incinerator for a good five to seven seconds. Now before you pick up any of your bacteria you want to make sure that this uh, loop has cooled down. Failure to cool down means that we'll basically be killing the bacteria uh, with the heat of the loop. Now you can do this in a couple of ways. You can just hold it and just wait and wait until it cools down. And you don't want to touch it to the, the um, table. You don't want to touch it to your hand. You don't want to touch it to anything. You just want to hold it and let it cool. Or you can take this flame loop and you can touch an area of the auger where there's no growth 
and make sure that there's no sizzling. Now the first thing we do here is we want to find one colony and we'll scoop up one individual colony. And what I mean by one individual colony is you would take the flame loop and you would touch it to one of these colonies. So we'll say we touch it here and we, we scoop up some of this right here. Well that's the first step that we're going to do. So we've scooped up the uh, bacteria and now we're going to rub it around in a little circle right here on our petri dish. Now our petri dish has had the lid on it the entire time. Notice how I'm placing this just underneath the lid and I'm smearing that around. I'm trying to uh, eliminate as much airborne contamination as possible. I will then flame my loop, make sure that I've sterilized the loop. Now after I have flamed the loop and it's turned nice and red, again I want to let the flame loop cool down. If I don't do so, then I will kill the bacteria and I will not have any growth on my auger plate. So right here you will see where I have placed the mass of the bacteria on my auger plate. Now, if I am new to um, streaking plates, before I, I have even done this step, I would have taken um, my, the bottom of my plate and using a Sharpie marker on the plastic uh, part of the plate, I would have divided the plate into three sections. This way I can see where I'm doing my dilution. Now, once I have done this, I'm going to take my... Um, flame loop and I'm going to run it across like this right here and I do that so that I can pick up this bacteria right here, this mass, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it across all like this right here, spreading it out and diluting it as I move from the top of the plate to midway down. And so I begin doing that and I just go back and forth. After I've done that, I will place the lid back on the uh, petri dish and flame my loop again. Now I'm going to flame the loop because the purpose of doing this is to um, dilute this bacteria and because I have bacteria on my flame loop I need to sterilize it so that when I move my flame loop over here I start off with no bacteria on my flame loop and I'm picking up the bacteria here and then I'm spreading it out and then diluting it down further. So I flame the loop, I make sure that the loop has cooled down so as not to kill my bacteria. I can touch this area right here and make sure that there's no sizzling. Now if I feel a, here a sizzling, I know that it's still hot and I need to let it cool a little bit more. So I touch right here and I'm going to bring it across one time and then back and forth several times here. And then I'm going to place my uh, lid back on my petri dish. I'm going to turn my dish again. I'm going to flame the loop. Again, we're going to flame the loop because now I'm wanting to take the bacteria that's been placed here and I want to dilute it down. Because my flame loop does have bacteria on it, I need to kill that bacteria. I need to let it cool. And once it's cooled, I'm going to take my flame loop and I'm going to come across like this one time and then back and forth so that I have diluted my bacteria down as much as possible. And while this is a different type of auger than the previous, the previous being nutrient auger, the point of this picture is to show you that once I have um, streak my plate, I want to place my dish in such a way so that the lid is on bottom and that the auger part is on top. And what this does is this keeps from any kind of, of um, collection of, of precipitate to build up on the auger plate. And that build up on the auger plate would cause uh, an inhibition of the bacteria from growing. The only other thing I'd want to tell you is that it's very important on the bottom part of the plate, the part that has the auger, to put key information. You want to put it towards the edge so you can see the growth that's going on on your plate, but you want to put the date, you want to put um, what the bacteria is that's growing on the plate, and then you want to put your group name across the side. 
that the date is important for us to um, know the age of the bacteria and then obviously we want to know what is growing on the plate and then for you uh, to be able to find your plate within the group. Now this right here would be an example of a poorly streaked plate because the bacteria growth is so heavy that we really don't have any isolation. You know, maybe a little bit here and here, but not a lot of isolation of individual bacterial colonies. Here we have a very uh, nice, well done uh, plate streak where we see the heaviest bacteria in section one. We can see how it's thinned out here and how finally we have lots of individual colonies that we can work with in order to run our various tests for identification. Remember the, the key to working with um, live bacteria and streaking the plate is to use aseptic techniques to avoid contamination of your workstation, uh, of your body, or of, of getting any kind of contamination uh, on the auger plates. So keep it clean. Uh, make sure that you're always sterilizing your uh, flame loop. Uh, make sure that you do not touch a hot flame loop directly to the bacteria. It will kill the bacteria and prevent growth. And make sure that you don't transfer any bacteria to your workstation. When you have completed the lab, you always want to um, end the lab with, with sterilizing your equipment again and then spray down your station with an antimicrobial spray. Uh, and just make sure that your workstation is clean and ready for the next group.